My Hero Academia Season 7, Episode 5. No recap this time. Oh, is this Toga? We did our best, but we obviously failed. That child is a demon. Someone just came in here to play tic-tac-toe. Stop this! Ooh, no over the, the height measurements, too. Of you. Control yourself! I'm telling you this for your own good! Nobody will accept you shorthand here for we, your parents, don't accept you. She's going through it. I mean, there's a reason she's visiting her home. A tiny red sparrow flutters into my room, and it tap dances all over my tummy. After a while, it starts pecking at my belly button, and pretty soon it's dancing inside me. Sure, all right, sweet, cute dream. Yay. <laughs> Don't worry, Toga, Uraka is coming for you. She's coming to help. I can't believe you're sentimental. Didn't think a psycho like you had actual feelings. Her feelings are super deep. They're too deep. Whether you spend today laughing or crying, tomorrow will come just the same. In which case, we should laugh. Don't you think? <laughs> oh, the house? That meant something to her. And don't get it twisted. I'm only nice when it causes endeavor more suffering. That was a minor detail. That was an awesome little <laughs> fall damage avoidance there. I guess they do have a lot in common, right? The two of them. I swiped the blood of someone I know you truly loved. Twice. The real one. Oh! Multiple togas is wild. We'll make sure we keep laughing. Forever. That is horrifying. That is horrifying. Twice already was a problem. <laughs> Toga being able to copy people and their abilities to have what Twice had is sort of wild to think about. It's really cool. The Toga Iraqi thing is one of the subplots that has been most compelling to me. I can't wait to see where it goes. It was such an awesome scene back when they were fighting in that little the house where Toga set the trap. There was so much depth of emotion to what Toga was experiencing, watching, you know, this beautiful, healthy, societally accepted relationship that the kids have, the UA kids have, and then sort of relishing in the sweet, sad joy of, I guess I have no choice but to not have this and hurt people I love, etc. I guess there's a really common trait of villains here across shows where a lot of what they want is perfectly normal and healthy and reasonable, but due to their difficulty or inability to get what they need or the inability to cope and see past the sadnesses in their lives, it manifests not as effort and trying and overcoming and coping, but like abandoning, giving up and lashing out, destroying. One of the difficulties I think of being a kid who for whatever reason does not match the, the standard expectations is that at that age, you take your immediate environment, including your family, the kids you go to school with, and sort of as a reflection, your society as the benchmark of the highest thing you can strive for. But in reality, although you don't know that yet, it's kind of just the default. And what is default is not necessarily what's optimal or best. I've come to think that default sort of serve as a minimum baseline, which is a very healthy function. Like it's good to have a minimum baseline. It's sort of the widest, most applicable method we found that creates a floor that people don't drop under. But it's not the same as being a ceiling. You know, it's not the same as being this ultimate. But because sort of by definition, most people have the average view, it's likely the case that the family you grow up in will hold average views, at least in multiple areas, right? And the kids you go to school with, their views, what they're enforcing will be a watered down version of what what their parents believe, which is probably also in many or most ways the default. So like, where do you get that higher source as a kid? How do you know there's more than that? How do you develop that source of like internal self belief and like a healthy detachment from the things people expect as opposed to just rage, you know, like this is unfair. Why me? Why is everyone so hateful? What did I do to deserve this? They can all rot in hell and die and bleed, etc. Toka's blood thing, I mean, what it feels like to me is it's like a very, very extreme visualization of like lust, you know, and strong desire and, and really intense, deep feelings for other people. Shigaraki? You okay? Sounds f just fine. I'm sure he's just fine. Bye. Do not be concerned. <laughs> Tomura's recovery is coming along nicely. He's so glib. I love it. No matter how hard the government or the pros try, they can't illuminate every shadow in society. Many heteromorphs hold a grudge against the so-called heroes because of this. This is sort of the exact thing I was just talking about. And while you have copied Stain's costume, many heteromorphs now wear it in reverence to you. Wow, he's becoming his, his own hero. This is your destiny. So pull big. The trigger in redestined yeah, this is, place. this is really big for Spinner. Big opportunity to be something. Take this important step and help your admirers find their courage. Even all for one sees it. That was like unusually encouraging from the big man. You got this spinner. <laughs> all for one known for his, you know, huge heart and wide concern for his underlings and comrades. In this world, everyone has the ability to become somebody else's hero. 
Interesting. Let you down. Cool. It's sort of a heroic thing, you know? Their villains are doing terrible stuff, but for Spinner to be able to step into this vision he has of greatness, going from fanboy to the hero himself, it's pretty cool. Bizarrely, it's an admirable moment. Our job is to stir up the masses and stoke the flames of discontent. UA officials are aware of the fact that Tomura Shigaraki will be back on his feet again. God, the villains just have uh, just struck with how many innate advantages they have. We should go to bed promptly. Our youthful resilience is our strength, so we must ensure that we're taking care of our minds and our bodies. Thanks, Mom. And brush your teeth. Dental hygiene is no joke. Thanks, Mom. We don't Mom. even have enough spare time to trade dirty stories. Uh, yeah, I guess not. All is lost. <laughs> what is Izuku? What? Huh? I agree. What was I missing? I need the behind the scenes on that one. Where's the Deku Mineta <laughs> dirty, dirty stories swapping OVA? I do agree we don't have enough downtime. Oh, I miss her. <laughs> I totally heard what I wanted to hear in that. He did distance himself from that. Answer. I think I was ready to agree with Mineta. Time to swap dirty stories is really important. We've hardly said a word to each other. I'm you. Oh, it was a lot. Uh, yeah, it's hard to capture this in words. I haven't even gotten to thank her for what she did. It's not needed. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Someone had his coffee. I need you all to listen closely. Oh, we're now, paying attention. We're only telling select people what I'm about to share. I noticed Nezu's here. The final Nezu battle. always there. Yes, Mineta in the final battle plan framing. <laughs> in frame. That's what I like to see. This is the story of how Mineta became the number one hero. What they found is that Tomura Shigaraki of the League of Villains, the man who single-handedly caused unprecedented disaster, will be active again in four days. I've been making a lot of jokes about Nezu being the traitor. One minor piece of evidence you might point to in that is that, like, he's a mouse dude, right? It's not like he's going to be widely accepted in society by the people who would reject Spinner, etc. So you might expect some bitterness there, but by the same token, that could be something that contributes to his greatness in the vein of what I was just saying about sort of the choice given adversity and given people not understanding. I think if you can really see it for what it is, transparently, and see it's just sort of where those people are and it's sort of their shortcoming, I mean, I don't even want to use a, a negative sounding word. It's just where they are you might wish they could see things more deeply more accurately nevertheless that's the way it's probably going to be for a given number of people at any given time if you can really see that for what it is and have the attitude of like well god bless you know sincerely and not even in a condescending way like i'm better than you for understanding just like it would be great if everyone can see this picture clearly then i think that robs it of its venom to an extent and then the focus once again turns back to you as someone who can see higher than the default. You then have things to do, you know, you have your own obligations. And that focus is more important than like railing against hating the things that are just totally out of your control. That might be Nezu. UA will enter under martial law at that time as we do our best to ensure the safety of everyone here. Also, we will become an airship. Oh, hey. The evacuation system kicks in. You Mom's will just living here now. To freely walk about the campus. Emma. <laughs> Deku's mom and Bakugo's mom are friends, that's so cool. We're grateful for all your support! That was directed at us. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Your safety is our chief concern, so keep your eyes I feel much better having this guy here. <laughs> this gun quirk. We didn't have to lift a finger to make sure our orders were completed. That's a relief. Now our future is guaranteed. I don't know what you want from all for one, but you're probably not gonna get it. You're gonna get something. This is a massive, terrifying goodbye and huge, huge moment of faith in the parents. Imagine letting your kids go into this. Oh, the kids. After we left Can we promote Eri too? I feel like Eri needs to join. We moved into a makeshift Where's Mirio? ...located 30 kilometers from the school. A newly built fortress they were calling Troy. This does not look secure, but okay. Nice of them to build a fancy coffin for us. Dude. Uh, okay, for real though. Can we go back to UA? This would be a good moment. This would be a good moment. Uraraka! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Oh, there's no need. That was nothing. But it's nice to hear you still obsess over every little detail. I hope Except the thanks. You. Not really. I was just... I was thinking about how all this, all these seasons later, I still haven't made any money for my parents. Remember when that was the goal? <laughs> my parents are poorer than ever. Not that that was even a bad goal. When she had that episode, I supported it, I think. I understood it. But it's cool to think back and see how much has changed, how different it feels. I think it makes sense to scale your aims with your capability, you know? You don't have to be the world savior. In fact, you probably shouldn't be until you actually are at the level where you, you could be a world savior, you know, which is no one. Helping your immediate circle in a great way is a really powerful goal, and it's probably the best thing that you could do. But Uraka has the stage. The circumstances have led her here, and her heart, her talent, her power has sort of scaled with the situation, so like, she's where she should be. I think I'm probably pretty weird. No, you're not! You're strong and brave and that hairstyle looks great on you and you're kind <laughs> and cool and nice to everybody. Wow, whoa, hello. I started thinking about Himiko Toga. 
When we fought one on one during Gigantomachia's rampage, I said she some cried. stuff to her that seemed like common sense to me, and she looked really sad to hear it. I could see this being really useful for Deku in his upcoming thing with Shigaraki. It's the same thing. She's killed and stolen joy from countless people. Forgiving her isn't an option anymore. I know that. But still. It's, it's very difficult. That's the reason I came out here. So I don't forget the horrible scenes from that day. And I can stay focused on what really matters. What I like about the way Uraka just put that is that I think there's a difference between a thing, an event, an action, and whether or not it's forgivable, and what you want, what you hope for, and what you think a human's life is worth, as well as the ability to understand and sympathize with, as impossible as that may sometimes seem, with people who have done horrendous things. I'll make an extreme example that obviously is not possible, but it's just to try to illustrate the idea using an extreme. Imagine someone who's done really awful things. You can choose whatever that thing is. You apprehend them. You have access to a device or a superpower or whatever, where you can transparently see into a person's soul. One day you apprehend this terrible person and you use your device or power and you see that wow this person actually has realized the error of their ways and will no longer do anything terrible and in fact will dedicate their lives to doing good yet they've done all of these you know let's call them unforgivable things they've done in the past what do you think is best is it best to imprison them to kill them or to let them go the only reason i can think of for punishment is as a signal or deterrent to other people to not do the same thing which is practical but using that person as a tool rather than dealing with the issue of them and their soul directly for me the obvious answer is you let them go i think a lot of people would have the impulse to enact revenge and i am human and I do understand and have felt that impulse. But I think that desire to kill or have retribution is likely connected to that same sort of misunderstanding or internal anger that leads people who do bad things to do those things in the first place. I think you can have it be both that a person has done unforgivable things and that you can hope for them to have a future. The highest thing that you want is for the reformation and for them to go on to do good things. The sort of like characterization, this person is bad, it must be destroyed, is just not really where it's at for me. But yes, I mean, the practical stuff also is important to Araka's point. She will have to do what she has to do. You have to use the information you have. Look, I get it. I swear. Huh? Shigaraki has done terrible, unspeakable things. All oh, right, Deku's already there. I don't think I can ignore what's hiding deep inside his heart. Which again doesn't mean forgiveness. I have no idea what kind of stuff Toya likes. Definitely udon, the kind that burns your mouth. <laughs> In that case. Was that loving levity from <laughs> Bakugo? We will stop them. Yeah, you can sort of rank your your order of priority, right? Oh. I love this. I love this theme. I've been craving a drink. A 40-year McCallum would be nice. I can have my son bring you a bottle that was aged 16 years. Just calling in the favors. No lies or ill will. She's clear. Ha, wh what? Perhaps tomorrow? Indeed, tomorrow it is. How do they circumvent that lie thing? Oh, maybe they like did some mental erasure on her so that she actually feels like she's telling the truth. See you soon. Wait, 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 did I get that right? Is he like literally under their bunker? Aoyama, why are you here? I thought you were at the police station. My parents' lawyer got me released for the moment. I'll go tell the others. Uh, wait, this is this is really suspicious. Would you like for me to tell you all for one's true goal? Our country is in a terrible place, which has caused problems for the rest of the world. Uh, wait, huh? this is this whole thing is weird. What's going on? I'm so confused. They would not let Oyama go. They would not let him just wander free. I mean, he's part of the plan now. The value of the yen suddenly tanked. Many Japanese companies are declaring bankruptcy. Uh, financial strife. The most dangerous of all. Wait, how much is the yen now? Am I reading this right and it's... 5,000 yen to the dollar? That would be wild. That would be something like you could buy a house or apartment in Japan that two Japanese people in yen would feel like a million dollars for $20,000 US. That's a pretty catastrophic exchange rate. If you rely on anything international for your economy, if I'm understanding this correctly. Meanwhile, villains everywhere are getting more bold. Whole nations are collapsing. The yen is useless, just floating through the air, no one cares. As the earth slips further into anarchy, the stage is prepared for one unrivaled opportunist to take initiative. Just knock it out of the park. Over all that exists. Taking the baseball metaphor. Sounds bad, but you're wrong. People wouldn't allow that to happen. It's sort of unknown. It would depend. I'm sorry. I had no choice. I want to protect Papa and Mama. No. You didn't! No way, no way, no way. I imagine you were scared to betray your friends. It can be so- No, wait, what? This Toga, tell me it's Toga. And the speech about my ultimate goal was admirable. 
No, wait a minute. I'm not getting fooled by this. This can't be real. Wait, but all for one called the parents. I'm so confused. Damn it. I don't want to believe in the betrayal. Can't stop twinkling with betrayal. Can't stop betraying. It can be so distressing to have someone put their faith in you. God, the oh. condescension. And the French. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This makes much more sense. Deku's in on it. This is part of the plan. Got it. That got me for a second. Very convincing. Distressing. You can't imagine, dear uncle. I won't betray my friends. Good. You ungrateful worm. Your acting was crazy realistic, Aoyama. Okay, good. Woo! <laughs> Whoa! I was never fooled. I knew that. I was just following your lead. Your tears really pushed it over the edge. Yeah, great but, voice acting. To be honest, that's not all. I may have wet myself too. You did it's okay crazy. to wet yourself in this situation. <laughs> they fooled me, like even knowing they had a plan. It's not fair when you have professional voice actors who are acting kids who are doing acting. They were too good. If you can't act, can you even call yourself a hero? I will stand up and fight all for one! Good. This is all happening so suddenly, though. I think that's part of, probably what threw me off, too. I could detect no malice. How did they hide from me? I'm also curious. It's a quirk, I mean. However annoying this may be, one for the is right in front of, front of me right, now. Yeah, right. They're both going to take their chances here. They haven't even noticed that I brought so many of my friends along with me. I'm Not afraid it's this. already too late for you. God, we're all here. I like how Shigaki entered in sort of off screen. Kurogiri? How can they use his power? Oh, nice. Papa and Mama told me oh, this everyone's here in the same time, in the same place. To show them we haven't wow, stopped twinkling, wow. inspiring the world We're to still twinkling. You. That's why today is the day you're defeated. And for I, I'm going to deliver this speech. <laughs> Wow, there it is. There's a lot of this arc so far about this, this idea, you know? Uraka and Deku, speaking about it, it applies to Ayama. Like, isn't this the best scenario? I know there are people who were like, kill Ayama. That's inevitable. People are going to react that way. I'm also not even sure people really feel that way. I think maybe it's what they would say because they think that's what people want to hear. There's this interesting phenomenon I've learned about where like, ideas can proliferate widely and broadly, even if very few people actually hold those beliefs or ideals. If enough people think there's a danger of not expressing a certain idea, the idea will sort of proliferate and be bounced around between multiple people who don't hold that belief. So it's unclear where people hearts truly are in the Oyama matter and in the revenge matter in general or like for Attack on Titan for that matter who knows it definitely is going to be real to a certain degree but yeah seeing this covered with Oyama and seeing Deku and Uraka's reaction to their their villains that they're paired up with it just feels intuitively right to me and I think sometimes with ideas or thinking about how to navigate situations things have a way of being clarified or resolved when you allow for multiple things to be true at once so if you think that being bad is just one solid thing whereby if you've done something terrible you are now just terrible because that thing exists and you think that by saying someone has potential or can be good or can change or is forgivable or is sympathetic, you are ignoring the fact that what they did was bad. When if you look at it with more depth and nuance, it's like that thing they did was bad. This person is sympathetic and has potential simultaneously. I see this a lot in discourse with public figures. Somebody will come along and say a certain thing and a wide response to that will be, well, that person is bad. And maybe there's something very true to that aspect of it, according to one's set of beliefs and opinions, etc. But somebody can have undesirable qualities, let's say, or qualities we don't like, and also be right about things or certain things. Someone can do bad things, let's say, and also have insight. It's not a binary switch of like, should I love them or should I hate them? You get to pick and choose. You can break things down to the cellular level, let's say. I actually think a lot of ideological conflict falls into one or two categories. One is that something is so complex that the seeds of the solution also create negatives. And we can't get rid of the negatives without undermining the positives. The other is ideas getting conflated and sort of piggybacking on each other. Or like there's a Trojan horse effect of ideas. So there will be this widespread underlying assumption. If X is true, then negative thing Y would inevitably occur. So therefore X cannot be true, which then causes you trouble because X might actually be true. And not allowing X to be true because you're afraid of Y consequence has a number of bad consequences, including you can no longer build or synthesize ideas using X. You're gonna be using something that's just not right. Also, opponents will use the fact that you're not presenting X correctly as, again, a Trojan horse to attack and undermine your whole position. When perhaps the solution in these scenarios is X is true, and yet we must prevent Y. Or Y is perhaps not inevitable given X. We can choose for X to not become Y, but we should accept that X is X. A simple example in this is just in everyday life and discourse, people don't want to concede any argument, any point to an opposing side because they think that by extension, that means the other side now has something good and therefore I have to stop hating them or I have to start liking them or I'm now exposed, my ideas are now shaky. Like allowing for one good thing from your opponent undermines everything you've been trying to build, in which case it's probably pretty fragile anyway, right? But like maybe your opponent has a point and maybe you need to incorporate that and maybe you can still hold your 
your opinions on what the ultimate action should be or what the right thing is, but like you're more robust by accepting the new information that feels true. You're made weaker by rejecting something that's truthful coming in just because you're in overall opposition to something else. The show makes it very clear and it feels right to me that you cannot sum up a whole human being. You cannot sum up someone's entire existence and the value of their soul and all of their potential and all of what they are, all of what they could be based on the collection of events and decisions in their life previously, even if those things are terrible. I think underlining this idea of heroism is also this like maximum clarity and depth of vision for other people because that, that actually is a lot of work. You know, it's a burden that you're carrying. You are doing it, right? Like you're pushing yourself. You're exerting your mental energy. You are eliminating easy tricks to make yourself feel better, seeking maximal responsibility for your own development and growth rather than looking to take people down or win to feel better. All the while, other people may not be affording you that same thing, yet you are doing it because you feel it's right. Those very people might be attacking you, but you having seen what's possible, you having seen what's higher, recognizing your responsibility, realizing that ultimately so many things, so much of what one is and life comes down to one's own disposition and choice and outlook, as opposed to all the things we like to blame, rising to that challenge in service to others. It's not just going out and doing work and battling and fighting for things, although that's also a big part of it. It's like the mental work, it's the inner cognition, it's the pushing your own limits of understanding, not taking shortcuts for comfort, not oversimplifying to avoid difficult truths. So Deku Nuraka and Ayama, you know, given this chance to turn around and turning around is very much in keeping with the, the ideas of the show and heroism, I think. Thank you.